a very good morning to Sir Marcus or anyone who is watching right now. Uh, my group, which is group one, which consists of me, Gareth, Tangte, Arthur, and Liu Zibin, are going to present our project, which is probability distribution, which consists of two probability distribution, being the discrete random variable distribution and the continuous variable distribution. Now, for the continuous variable distribution, we have collected an amount of 60 students from Form 1, including male and female, to collect the data of their height. Now, as you can see, the highest frequency was the Form 1 students with a height of range from 150 cm to 159, and the lowest, which was only two frequencies, which is two students had a height from 130 cm to 139 cm and as you can see in the table we sorted them in in a way so we can calculate the mean which was 156.46 and the standard deviation which was 10.092 here is the normal distribution graph that we plotted using the mean value of 156.46 and the standard division, 10.092. Range 1. Find the probability of a 1 student with a height of 150 cm. Thus, if x is 150, then the z-score would be 1.63099. The value of standard normal distribution is 0 0.2611. Multiply it with 100, we'll get 26.11 percentage. Then we take the percentage and multiply it with the total number of students, we'll get 15.666. Rounding that off, we'll get 16 students. Range 2, find the probability of Form 1 students with a height at least 160 cm. The value of that score is 0 0.3507 if x is 160. The value of that normal distribution is 0 0.3628. Multiply 100% with the value, we will get 36.28% of students with this range. When we multiply the percentage with the total number of students, which is 60, and we will get 21.768. Therefore, we run off it and get 22 students. If you remember the data, there are actually 22 students within this range. Next, range between 140 to 170 cm. If we want to collect the standard normal distribution, we need to minus 1 with the area under the graph less than 140 at the left and area more than 170 at the right. Why minus 1? Because the total area of standard normal distribution graph is 1 unit squared. And we will get 0 0.857. This means that there are 85.87% students within this range and multiply with the total number of students, we will get 52 students. Conclusion The distribution is widely spread. The standard division of the experiment is big, therefore, the graph becomes more wider. What is the significance? This indicates that the data collected is not consistent. Data to having large number of frequency on height that is not within 150 to 159 cm, which is where the mean located. For discrete random variables, we use a paradise row to three times. As the n represents 30 times row, p represents for getting a number more than 5, which is 1 over 6, and q represents for not getting a number more than 5, which is 5 over 6. Besides that, the mean would be 5 by using the formula n times p, and the standard deviation would be 2.0412 by using the formula square root m times q. As you can see, the final data we get after the experiment is 6 over 30. Therefore, we selected 1 over 5 as our experimental probability. As you can see, there are two graphs. Um, both of these graphs are binomial distribution and they have the same p-value, 0 0.2. Uh, for the number of trial taken, first graph is 10 and the second is 12. So what conclusion can we make about the mean value and the distribution that we have plotted? 
First, the p value is 0.2, therefore it is skewed to the right. Second, when the p equals 0.5, the distribution is symmetric around the mean. When p is greater than 0.5, the distribution is skewed to the left. When p is less than 0.5, the distribution is skewed to the right. Uh, third, when the number of trial increases, the value of experimental probability is closer to the theoretical probability.